Welcome to CBRE's Australian Industrial Market Snapshot. We've assembled a room of experts to talk about the fundamentals that are shaping the industrial market today. Industrial asset values have regained their pre-GFC levels and are again making headlines. Super prime assets are once again challenging the 6% threshold. The concept of a portfolio premium is very much alive and well. The market appreciates that it takes considerable time and financial resources to assemble a quality portfolio and is prepared to pay handsomely to acquire scale. But how much does today's market resemble the mad scramble for assets we saw at the top of the last market peak? We think there are some important differences and want to share these with you in today's brief presentation. To begin with, the depth and global diversity of the investor buyer pool in Australia's industrial market will add considerable pricing stability, which was missing in a narrow and purely domestic investor base back in 2007. And further, buyers have been far more patient and discerning in this market. Unlike 2007, a very clear pricing distinction occurs between the very best core assets and those that sit a little further along the risk curve. And so there should be. One of the things that we're probably most excited about from an Australian real estate perspective and a capital markets perspective is one of the great competitive advantages that Australia has at the moment and we see this as something that's going to persist for some time. Uh, it's what we phrase at UBS as the lower for longer uh, interest rate environment and we see that as an enormous benefit compared to our global uh, competitors. The benefit that Australia's got that we've still got some headroom uh, in that respect, an official cash rate of 2%, 10 year bond rate anywhere between 25 and 2 and 3 quarter percent means that we've got a real buffer there and the Australian yield on prime assets uh, is still at quite a margin to our offshore uh, competing markets. Weight of capital is still outweighing property fundamentals. Regional and non-core locations are gathering further momentum given the scarcity of core stock. It's a very good trading market at present, both from a sell side and buy side perspective. From an occupier's point of view, the focus continues to be on the eastern seaboard, with both Sydney and Melbourne the predominant focus. Sydney is still in very high demand and Brisbane continues to be tightly held, whilst Melbourne continues to be a very liquid market. That said, to try and acquire land is still challenging, certainly in Sydney and also in Queensland, as well as Western Australia. Potential rental growth will more than likely be driven by supply versus demand in certain markets rather than economic factors. When we consider rental growth, it's predominantly going to be focused on Sydney and it comes back down to lack of vacancy in core markets, certainly in Eastern Creek, Erskine Park and surrounding areas. When we look at rental growth, the likelihoods will be constrained to Sydney and that's predominantly due to the, the lack of supply across the entire market. Interestingly, cost of debt has been a key driver in recent times with owner-occupiers acquiring a number of assets across the country with short remaining lease terms. Given the current level of demand for core stock, we consider a sub-6% yield to become the norm rather than the exception. And I think for the purchases of those uh, portfolios, we can see a lot of upside for the next few years. This is not a phenomenon that's about to disappear. Uh, we are, as we say, in this low interest rate environment for a long period of time. Um, you know, Japan's been going through this for 20 years. Uh, it's going to take a long time to fix Europe. Uh, and Australia, across all of that global turmoil, is going to have a real advantage. Corporate sale and leasebacks continue to gain momentum as companies capitalise on the current pricing levels of the capital flows. We expect this current trend of corporates going from owner to tenant to continue in the short to medium term. When a strong lease covenant is involved, capital is also attracted to specialised asset classes such as refrigerated logistics, production facilities and data centres. Uh, and that capital that we're seeing come into Australia at the moment, and we've been a number of large transactions recently uh, that have seen this, they see that yield benefit to be significant. Uh, and it's almost agnostic to asset class, whether it's across office, retail or industrial. Uh, there is obviously some clear benefits of the varying asset classes there. Industrial, uh, prime industrial still offers the best yield spread uh, compared to office and retail. Owner-occupied demand continues to strengthen due to the lower cost of capital. This has been highlighted by a number of sales of assets with shorter lease terms. So letting you alone the yield advantage I talked about previously, when you adjust for currency, Australia is going to be front and centre for many global funds. And we see that as a great landscape 
for continued investment into Australia and continued capital appreciation of these Australian dollar assets.